All right. Now let's do two questions about the Joule-Thomson coefficient. So the first question is uh, asking whether we can use hydrogen, which has the maximum inversion temperature of negative 68 degrees C, uh, we can, whether we can use that for AC application. Okay. So the maximum inversion temperature is given. This maximum inversion temperature is basically, if I make a plot of temperature versus pressure and show the edge constant line for, uh, for hydrogen, this temperature is basically equal to negative 68 degrees C. So we know that during throttling, we are always decreasing the pressure. So basically, we are going from right to left. This is the direction that we go. So let's say if we start from point one, during throttling, we go to point two. Okay, so this is direction of the throttling, throttling process. The direction is from right to left. If I start from point one, I end up with point two. So if we are on the right side of this uh, temperature, basically the temperature is increasing during the throttling process. Only we can get a decrease in temperature whenever we are on the left side of this point. But there is a problem. This temperature is that low that if we really want to make cooling effect, we should have uh, our uh, system designed to operate here. But that is way too low. The AC applications are operating at higher temperatures. So at the end of the day, we cannot use hydrogen with this maximum inversion temperature to make cooling effect for AC applications. So the answer is going to be no. Hydrogen's temperature drop during throttling only occurs at temperatures less than negative 68 degrees C, which is too cold for AC application. Okay, if you are uh, throttling here with uh, hydrogen, the temperature in fact increases. Okay, now let's do the second problem. In the second problem, the question is asking for the Joule Thompson coefficient of steam at 3 megapascal and 300 degrees C. So what I'm going to do to solve this problem is I am going to apply this equation which says mu joule Thompson is equal to partial T partial P for H constant. Now we want to find the enthalpy of steam at this pressure and that temperature and that is our reference enthalpy. So let's say at temperature equal to 300 degrees C and pressure equal to 3 megapascal, the enthalpy of steam is equal to 2994.3 kilojoule per kilogram. Okay, so this is the enthalpy we have at the given condition. Now, remember, the Joule Thompson coefficient is defined for throttling process. In a throttling process, enthalpy is constant. So our enthalpy uh, through this process should be equal to this. Okay, now this is what you want to do. You want to go to the steam tables. Okay, table A6, if you are using our textbook. Okay, so the pressure is 3 megapascal and the temperature is 300 degrees C. This is the correct table. Okay, so this is for steam or for water. And 
I'm trying to make it clear. This is pressure of three megapascal, if you can see, if the reflection allows. So this is three megapascal. And for temperature of 300 Kelvin, I got the enthalpy of 29, 94.3. Okay, now what you wanna do, you wanna change the pressure, go one above and one below, and also change the temperature, but for the same enthalpy. Okay, once again, what you wanna do, you wanna keep that enthalpy as a reference value, try to find the same enthalpy for this pressure and the corresponding temperature. Then you wanna come here for a lower pressure, you wanna find the same value of enthalpy in this column, try the corresponding temperature, so you have two pressures here, you have two corresponding temperatures, which in each case you are getting the same H value, and based on that do the calculation for the uh, Joule-Thompson coefficient. All right, this is what I exactly mean. So you know that the two pressures that you have are 3.5 megapascal for high range and 2.5 megapascal for low range. So you wanna go to pressure greater and less than three megapascal. For P greater than three megapascal, table gives you the pressure of 3.5 megapascal, right? In this pressure, you already have the enthalpy. So enthalpy in this condition is 29, 94.3 kilojoule per kilogram. This enthalpy comes from here. We know that uh, throttling is a constant enthalpy process. So you go to the table and you try to find the temperature that matches this condition. With some interpolation, you will obtain the temperature equal to 306.28 degree C. Okay, but that was for pressure greater than uh, three megapascal. You are doing exactly the same thing, but for pressure less than two, uh, three megapascal. For P less than three megapascal, you go to table and you will realize that the uh, pressure less than that is given at 2.5 megapascal. Once again, you already have the enthalpy because throttling process is a constant enthalpy process so you have the pressure you have the h value you already have access to the table so for this one you obtain the temperature by some interpolation 294 degree c okay now you have two temperatures and you have two pressures and a constant enthalpy value so you can apply these two conditions into this coefficient okay so let's say this is condition a, this is condition B. So A and B are before and after the given condition of the problem. So you are putting A and B into this equation. So A and B are going into the equation of mu joule Thomson is equal to partial T, partial P when H is constant. So your coefficient mu is equal to change of temperature, let's say this temperature minus this temperature, 306.28 minus 294 degree C over the change of pressure, partial P, All right? Just make sure you're converting the pressure into KPA. So pressure here is for A, I have 3,500 KPA and for B, I have 2,500 kPa. So if you do the math, you will end up with positive 0, 0,122, 0, I'm sorry, uh, degree C per kPa. That is your uh, Joule-Thompson coefficient. Or I could say that my Joule-Thompson coefficient is equal to 12.2 degree C per megapascal. What does this number mean? What does it mean when they say the Joule-Thompson coefficient is 12 degrees C per megapascal? It simply means for each one megapascal drop in pressure, the temperature also drops 12.2 degrees C. 
okay so once again this number means that for each one megapascal drop in pressure the temperature drops 12.2 degrees C all right note that I cannot say for each one megapascal drop in pressure the temperature increases in uh, uh, increases for 12.2 degrees C I cannot say that because this joule thompson coefficient is positive okay the sign of that is important that means if the pressure drops the temperature drops if this joule thompson coefficient was negative then in that case my temperature would increase but right now because this uh, this uh, value is positive then as the pressure drops the temperature also drops